allegiance, please. My pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, everybody. On our agenda was a meeting at 4 o'clock, which had to be rescheduled, so we didn't have that meeting. In executive session, we met on a real estate matter, and no personnel matter. Next meeting of this, oh, excuse me, any visitor or public comment? Please take the podium and address your, um, uh, give us your name and your address. Sure. Good evening, everyone. Um, Phil Holmain, I live at One Pine Valley Road. In Doylestown, I've lived here since 1967, which is probably more than a lot of you have lived. <laughs> but anyway, we've enjoyed the area uh, and still do. But the uh, thing I'm here tonight on, uh, well, to give, give you a little background also, just so you know where I'm coming from. I'm a Naval Academy graduate, served our country. And I led Antarctic expedition down the South Pole. I was with, down at the South Pole, I had a fortune to be with two of the five Earth scientists we had at the time. That's all. In fact, these five Earth scientists went to the South, went to the Akita Accord where they came up with the air pollution thing. 2,000 NGOs went there. There was only five Earth scientists there, several meteorologists. They're very short-term oriented. They don't study uh, Earth science. But... Uh, so anyway, they signed it, and they put a sentence in. We don't know whether the earth is warming or cooling. But they took that sentence out, but wouldn't remove their signatures as they had requested. Um, the head of the Greenpeace, has, uh, one of the founders, had just reported uh, that, yes, all the studies that they've done on now on global warming it's are fiction. They're not, not true. And uh, there's been a lot of misinformation that I have seen from Antarctica that's not true. Uh, Antarctica has 96% of the uh, Earth's ice, and uh, it still does. And those two ships that were trying to prove that the ice was shrinking are stuck in the ice now, and it's fall, and the temperatures are dropping 10, 20 degrees each day, and they'll be there till next summer, luckily, if not for a few years. Uh, but that's not why I'm here. Why I'm here is we've had a huge winter, as you all know. We were named Tree Town, and now I think half our trees have been damaged dramatically, especially the older ones. All my trees are 50 years old. They live in an acre and a quarter. My neighbor just had a truck there uh, Saturday, last Saturday, at his property. The truck was there for 10 hours and with a crew of three people. That cost a lot of money with all the equipment and shippers and everything else. Now, we have this, well, only about six townships or seven townships in the whole state have a no-burning law. And uh, let me just go into that. I did a project with Ken DeFaze also. He is the chief geologist at Princeton University. Uh, well, we did a gold venture together, but that's another story. Um, anyway, uh, when the tree limb breaks or any, you know, any of that foliage comes off, it will decompose. It will decompose totally within a few years, which are science-wise is the same as burning. It will give off in that time the same amount of CO2 mathematically as burning. And there's no difference in pollution between burning in a fireplace or fire pit or out in the yard. I use a 55-gallon drum. But anyway, or had used for many years, uh, uh, the public servants is what the township supervisors are supposed to be. In this day and age, we've become more public dictators in telling the people how they should live. Uh, I've seen even, and not well intentioned a lot of times, but you forget things. I read in our township blurb that, oh, you should pick up all the dog poop on your, your acre or whatever. Well, because that can pollute streams. No, not true. The circle of green circle you see next spring of uh, green is from uh, the decom decomposed. And that's the, the total effect of that dog poop. In fact, that, and it totally, in 90 days or so, has no, the composition has totally changed inside that from all sorts of uh, factors of being eaten by different small insects and whatnot. 
But the point is, uh, we shouldn't pass laws unless <coughs> they're needed to be passed. On uh, burning, uh, this has been a right in this country for ever since we settled it, and everywhere in the world. Uh, to say that this is a, a, a pollution thing, the Congress, when they passed the air pollution laws, said there should be no law passed to uh, inhibit uh, air pollution unless it's um, detectable, unless you can measure it and define it. We can't do any of that. And the air in this township probably only stays, especially this time of year, not much more than half an hour to an hour. I mean, we live in an ocean of air. We're not even a grain of sand in when you look at the huge earth. Uh, down the South Pole, we have a series of steps. They go down 4,300 years. We can see three gray layers. The earliest writing in China was that the, uh, a volcano exploded and darkened the sun for three years. We could see that. We measured each year uh, of the CO2 content and uh, the different uh, micrometer things in the air, in the snow that drifts in. And uh, during the uh, uh, Copper Age of over 800, 900 B.C., the CO2 content was 20% double what it is now because in our CO2 content of well, about 7.6 percent over five and a half percent 5.6 5.7 you can't measure it totally uh, is from volcanoes so we're trying to in our politicians mind control the world with two percent solution or something and you can't it's impossible not only that Russia's building th over 30 new coal fire uh, uh, plants for generating electricity uh, almost every month they're starting them. Now they're trying to electrify the whole country with coal. Uh, so, uh, you know, and also what this has happened in the last few years, a lot of people, my neighbors, have piled up wood piles, just of, of, of long branches and stuff. And the snake population in town has dramatically doubled, and I've talked to some people about that. And... Uh, uh, there's been a great increase in snakes, uh, and uh, not harm, uh, harmless snakes, most of them, but most people don't like them in their yard. And we don't want to become snake town as we're becoming. So uh, my plea is that we can lift the span, which seems to me to be unreasonable anyway, at least this spring so people can get rid of their garbage without spending thousands of dollars. <clears throat> Does anyone have any comments or questions? I don't believe that we can lift the ban. Dick and Sean, you were on the EAC at the time that when we started working on the ordinance, we were basically dictated through DEP, and anyone in the Philadelphia area in the air containment and the mitigation were required to plan to, you know, reduce burning and, and everything. And There's only six that, townships I mean, in the know. whole area and state that have that rule. It's not, you've been fed a lot of misinformation at the same time. Well, it came through our Environmental Advisory Council who studied it at the time and recommended the ordinances and, and the requirements from DEP at the time. I would suggest you go back and pull the history out and let the board know what you discover because I recall some of that. I recall John Carson being concerned about neighbors, so mm -hmm. I think you ought to find that out and let, let him know what, that dis what you discover. It was a long time ago. I know yeah, the ban's been be, in fact for be about 10 50, years. At yeah. least, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. You know what? Our EAC will take a look at it, okay? All right. Thank you for your comments. Thank you. Thanks. Anybody else? <clears throat> Mr. Lair. Bill Lair, Bunker Hollow Road. Um, I just have a couple comments. The first is, has to do with, I was at the Warrington Township meeting last week, and Mr. Smarconish is now going to do the final phase of the property that he owns right behind where Casey Prime and all is. He's going to do the final building back there. Mr. Gunlack was there and made the presentation. A couple of the residents from Warrington had asked about water runoff. And they, he said, no, and there's no problem with what water runoff. That's already been taken care of. I know when that project was almost completed, I had hired Sam Costanza from Van Cleef to study that because we were getting a lot of water runoff to that tributary behind us. So if they're going to start building, maybe this is the time. I think, Mario, you may have been in, uh, involved in that at the time, but I don't know. We may want to take a look at that. I know we don't have any control with Warrington. 
but we may want to address that situation to have that retention basin a second look to see if it is doing what it's supposed to do. The county one. The no. county retention. There's no, a county the, retention basin. Well, there's a township one that that, um, that project that feeds into uh, the county one, and then the county one goes under 611 and right. uh, disperses in that tributary. So. Right. That's the one that caused you trouble. That's correct. Yeah. I, I guess maybe, Dick, you can talk to the folks down there. I don't know. It's up to you. Probably. Is that something you can look at? Get a copy of the plans. Mm -hmm. Mary, look at it. Just to see if that. If you uh, make some modifications to improve the situation down there, it's well worth trying. Now. I only bring it up. The history. Uh, good, because I only bring it up because I got uh, this uh, pamphlet from uh, Mr. Hendrick about streams and water coming into streams. So, perfect timing to take a look at that. Uh, one other final thing: I happened to be over at Lancheck Enterprises last Friday when that fire broke out. And we turned the alarm in. I just want to mention the alarm was turned in. In like 10 minutes, three fire companies were there. Doylestown was number one. Horsham was number two. And Warrington was number three. And I have to tell you, even though nothing against the other two, Doylestown came. They knew exactly what to do. They started putting the water on that fire within two minutes. And I just wanted to have that go on record. They did an excellent job. Yeah, we'll let Mr. Cope know. Thank you. Chief Cope, I guess he is. Um, Mario, can you and Dick get together on that one? Yeah, we'll uh, we'll take a look at it. Thank you. Try to get some drawings. Okay. On Boards agree, and the board agrees. Yes. Yep. Thank you. Lee. My quick question for the evening is: Can we? Can you update us on the appointment to the Ways and Means Committee? We've had a couple candidates since We will. January. Supervisor's comments. We'll make the appointments. Then. That's what I needed Thank to know. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Thank you. All right, next meeting of the board is Tuesday, April 1st, 2014. The DC, um, the District of Columbia Cherry Blossom trip is on March 29th. It's $55 a person. Sign up by going to doylestownrec.com. Red Blo uh, Cross Blood Drive is Friday, the 28th of um, March, 2 p.m. to 7 p.m. here at the Township um, Activity Center, which is the red building behind. Please schedule at redcrossblood.org. The Central Park Native Plant Demonstration Gardens is this Saturday, um, March 22nd at Central Park, 8 a.m. at the Environmental Education Center. Um, we're looking for plant donations and volunteers to get out on the get out um, information on this event. Visit the website or contact um, our uh, special project manager uh, Ashley Thompson at this, this at the Township Building. Potholes, um, to report a state road pothole, 1800 Fixed Road, and to report a township road pothole, call our office, 398-9915. If you need to know if it's a township road or a state road, we have a list on our website. All right, next item on the agenda is approval for the minutes from, let's, can we do them earliest to, from January 28, 2014. Is there a motion to approve? Move to approve. Okay. Is there a second? A second. Thank you. Um, all in favor of the minutes for January 28th? Aye. 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 With one abstention. Sean Tuhill. Um, motion to approve the minutes for February 4th. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, I'm abstaining, and so is Ryan. Okay. <laughs> Motion to approve the minutes for February 18, 2014. Move to approve. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I'll abstain. Rick abstain. and Ryan are abstaining. All right. So we're done with that bit of business. How about the minutes for today? Did we just do them? No. We just did them. Okay. Because you didn't meet on the 4th. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. um, correspondence from the solicitor. Anything? I, I have nothing to report. Chief? Uh, just a quick update on the uh, traffic import, uh, improvements to intersections 611 and New Britain and 611 Edison Furlong. Uh, we have a meeting scheduled with PennDOT representatives, uh, Pannonia Associates, and some township staff to meet with, uh, with them and discuss some of their improvements that they're – they gave us a draft improvements. Um, at this point, it doesn't look like there's any signalization changes. It looks like it would be stripings and uh, road, roadway signs. 
um, but we're going to meet with them on the 28th at 9.30 here in the township building to discuss further and see what they actually have to lay out for us. I thought the roads were, I mean, the uh, traffic was going to be talking to each other as they, as it approached the, those, you know, the lights change. And there is no and signals there currently, and they don't anticipate that being part so of that, the improvement. This that's is, not going to be Yeah, this is specifically at those two intersections that kind of Left link, turning. link in there at uh, Park there, and uh, we'll see what they have. No signals. What they're proposing. Okay. Thanks. Anything else? That's it. Mario? Nothing at this time. Stephanie? Um, in your packet, I gave you some information, minutes from the last um, ChemFab meeting, and they had indicated they wanted to start digging up and removing the contamination that's there in the, on the property that's located in the borough. Um, initially, the um, owner of the property was not going to give them permission to uh, excavate uh, at the last minute. He has um, about la late last after the packet went out and everything. He has agreed to um, grant the excavation, okay. and things will be moving along there hopefully very soon okay. to okay. excavate that soil. Okay. Can you uh, update us on the Bitzer uh, yes. contamination? In, yes, in your packet, and you probably saw an article. I guess it was maybe Sunday or Monday's paper um, as well. Uh, the contamination found uh, in reports from the Bitzer property in New Britain Borough uh, that was um, identified and provided to New Britain Borough. They notified us, and I copied the board on the correspondence that we sent to DEP and asked them to get involved. And I believe uh, New Britain is going to be looking to ask them as well to get involved and help out and study whether or not there is a plume and whether what the contamination is and what, if any, plume exists in the area. Um, as the board knows, Dick and I have been very successful working with DEP um, on some previous contaminations in the township, bringing public water um, to those areas if and when there were public or were contamination in the wells. So uh, we're waiting to see, um, because it's in New Britain Borough, they have to connect with um, the DEP, and hopefully they'll do that shortly and um, get them involved. Good, thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, supervisors. Um, Sean? Uh, thank you. Uh, good evening. Uh, not too much tonight um, as one of our, our park and rec meeting was canceled or postponed the next month, either, either due to weather or, or lack of a quorum. But um, we did have a bike and hike meeting this morning, and uh, the, we, they discussed, uh, as you know, we've heard before previous meetings, a lot of big stuff going on this year. Uh, so just to touch on the Destination Peace Valley, our sensory trail and the Deshaimini Greenway all moving ahead with those plans. Permits are being pulled together. Um, I think the township, I'm not sure if that's Dick, but I think there's something with the uh, uh, stormwater plan or such for the one. Uh, but the, they're moving ahead, and we'll see all that happening uh, in 2014, um, hopefully spur additional growth. But anyhow, um, that's the only thing I have for that. And otherwise, I encourage you guys to come out. It's a great committee. I think we had 18 people this morning. Uh, at the meeting, so it um, would be great if we could have that turn out at all of our meetings. Uh, but anyhow, thank you. That's all I got. Thank you. Ken? Thanks. Um, regarding the committee uh, appointments, I would like to make a motion that we appoint Ahmad Abunabi to the Ways and Means Committee and Robert Salonik to the Park and Rec Committee. Okay. Anyone uh, care to second those? I'll second, I'll second those appointments. Okay. Questions, conversations? All in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Thank you. You have something else, Ken? Yes. Yes, I do. Um, early on um, in the year, there was a, a pension meeting, and we've typically, after I, I learned about this, that we have two of these meetings uh, a year. And the first one was more of a learning experience for me to see what was happening. But the more I read and, and through, through the BCART discussion that we had and we learned about pensions and what's funded and not funded and what, you're, what's, what risk you're at and where you should be, um, I would like to ask the, the board if, uh, to have another meeting prior to the second one we have, which would be later on in the year, because we're, we're not fully funded. so. I just want to make sure we know what all the risks are, where we're at, how we're, where we're going to go, and how we're going to get there, and really have a good plan, uh, well thought out plan, and how we do that. So I would ask Stephanie to organize a meeting to get the consultants back in here 
and to uh, so we can have that discussion. So our next meeting would be in June. All right. right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We the first Tuesday in June. We can. Can, try we, get, could, can we get them in here before that? We can certainly. I think the concern was we, we kind of discussed yeah. this after the meeting. The mm-hmm. Cato meeting. Um, the 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 lecturer mm-hmm. at that meeting indicated that, and if you weren't like 95 percent funded, you're in not good shape. And mm-hmm. we're at, what, 70 percent? We're 80 percent. 80 percent. And that mm-hmm. was rated not good. Right? And actually, at that meeting, yes. and actually, <laughs> at that meeting, yeah, however, so, yeah. our consultant, and I know, we, we, we know that. We're, we know our consultant right. says one thing, but we're, we heard another consultant yeah. say something else. Yeah. So we just want to yeah. get some, like, yeah. average. Correct. Clarification. Yes, exactly. And, and that might... That could be in letter form, I would think. We don't. Uh, do you want to pull these people in? I guess we could pull them in. I think it would be worthwhile pulling them in. Pull them in and just not do the June meeting. So you do this earlier. Right. And we don't have them come back again. So. Yeah, maybe we have the meeting in like the April time frame, and then we get and then we we deem from there if we really need to have a June meeting. That's a good. That's a good idea. Yeah. Well, let's yep, do it that's that fine. way. Okay. Stuff you mm-hmm. can pull it in earlier. Yeah. Maybe have it at four o'clock before the second meeting in April. You don't have a second meeting in April. You'll be at. I will be as he said. I can do it later in April. Okay, well, we'll talk. We'll get it. We'll yeah, let's we'll find okay. a date that we works for everybody. Okay, thanks, Ken. Anything else? Yes. Uh, the EAC had... Uh, you only get two, you know that. <laughs> really? <laughs> but I'll take one of Sean's. How's that? <laughs> one of you. Um, the EAC had sent out uh, the um, this literature on the repairing buffers and how important it is that we protect... Uh, so many feet be, be, uh, you know, before the waste streams or the, the creeks and, and the rivers and, and our ponds. So this is um, an extremely valuable thing. We've got, we're getting positive feedback. We haven't sent it out to everyone yet. <laughs> we sent it out to a select group in the beginning, but uh, it, it's, I hope people pick them up and read them because it's really important that we do a, a better job of managing those waste streams and stuff. Do we have them here to pick up? We have we have some extras, I believe. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I shall have okay. them out front. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the meeting we do. Mm-hmm. Okay. The uh, last item, okay. a third. I'm sorry. The last item I have I'm is <laughs> because of the the, uh, the rough winter we had. Um, if you remember, Pico had had uh, held <laughs> an open house at the New Britain Township building, and so I went down there to talk to some of uh, the, the Pico reps that were there, and I was surprised that uh, that. One, they really don't know when your power goes out in your house. That it is that phone call that is extremely critical for you to call for them to notify them that you're out. And they're going to alleviate that problem, though, when they replace it with your existing meters with smart meters. And so in that discussion, it led, and I was talking to some neighbors, and it led to a lot, of, a lot more discussion via email and with Stephanie and with Ted Duran or Pico Rep that there are some concerns about smart meters. And if you go on the Internet and really study these things, it talks about some cities and counties have banned them, some have started fires, and so it just raised a lot of questions. So as a result of that, we're going to have a meeting tomorrow with uh, a couple, the two residents and whoever else can make it and our PICO rep to really try to put this to bed, to really make sure we're getting the right information to the residents to make sure that these things are safe, they're secure, and if they're not, we'll find that out too, hopefully. So we're having that tomorrow at 9 o'clock. Thanks. Good job. Here. Here. Anything else? No. Excellent. Thank you. Um, Rick? I also have three things, so I'm hoping Ryan will concede one. I'll give you a couple of mine. at the Planning Commission, we reviewed two plans. Both of them are talked about tonight, so uh, there's no, no point in discussing that right now. Um, the other thing, and, and Bill Air mentioned about how pride we have in our township, um, and we always strive to be number one, but it, you know the, the, the difficulties out there, and one of them was potholes this year. And you read about it in the papers, and et cetera, et cetera, and an event, and uh, it was nice. In the township, we got a letter thanking us for coming out so quick to fill the potholes in the in their neighborhood. So um, it, it's things like that that reinforce us and, and let us know that we're doing the right thing and to continue along that way. And the third thing is, <coughs> um, you may have heard me mention before, PSATS. It's our township supervisor organization um, uh, uh, statewide. And this month's issue is all about how to be a good supervisor, what 
what what steps you should take, what mistakes you can make, et cetera, et cetera. And it was reassuring and, and nice to see that uh, Barbara Lyons was quoted in there and, and, and um, put in the magazine as someone to instruct new supervisors. So you got a good township going here, and, and I, I, I think uh, we all appreciate it, but sometimes we don't mention it. So Thank you. kudos. Thank you. I was thought you were going to do that. Oh, I was going to say, I thought the we were going to do that. Yeah, the governor. I haven't finished yet. Oh, okay, sorry. Oh. <laughs> right. You're in the um, I just, I'll, I'll just take one thing since they stole all mine. <laughs> um, we just had a Ways and Means meeting, and, um, you know, it was nice to see that uh, we had some township residents that came out. Um, so, so really nice because certainly um, our budget is important and it's important for the residents to understand. I think that the, the committee is doing a really good job of working towards making things understandable for the residents. So um, hopefully um, down the line here very shortly you're going to be able to pop on our website and see nice pretty graphs that are going to represent um, how we are fiscally. Um, and, and Lee, I want to commend you because uh, I think uh, taking over the chairmanship role, you've been doing a, a fantastic job. So if we're giving out kudos tonight, I'll give you a kudos, too. Okay. So. <laughs> and at PSATS this year, um, there are 1,450 townships of our size in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, and we are number one from the Governor's Award in Intergovernmental uh, Cooperation and Excellence um, because we... The idea is to cooperate as much with our local municipalities in achieving um, the, best the best practices and services for our residents, and we, we've done that again with the um, Chalfont, New Britain Borough, oh, New, New Britain, Britain Township, Township, and the county, and the county, the and Valley also Trail. Township for the Peace Valley Trail. So we're going to get that out in Harrisburg, um, no, uh, in Mark. Hershey. Actually, um, uh, no, in Harrisburg. In Harrisburg. In the Rotunda. In the Rotunda, we're going to get that big award. So um, congratulations again to our staff. Um, I think it's a great, it's a great uh, acknowledgement, and we've done it before. So this is really cool that we're getting in again. So um, thank you, and that's all I have. And we're going to go back to the. Uh, the New business, land development. There's a request for an extension um, that we received tonight from Mr. Murphy on the uh, which property? The Old Devlin, 360 Old Devlin Pike. Is there a motion to approve the extension? A request for extension. I would like to make that motion. Okay. A second. Thank you. And, and I encourage my fellow supervisors to vote for it. I mean, it was uh, <coughs> to approve it. We, we had some challenges with this project, and... Uh, um, we worked our way through it, and that's part of the reason for the delay, was working out some of the, the, bugs. Um, the bugs. Yeah. So they did. They complied. They worked out the bugs. They just need a little bit more time, so I encourage uh, uh, approve this. Okay. Call on the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Rick. Um, the Cummer Track, preliminary final minor subdivision on the... Um, 2931 Turk Road location. The uh, property is owned by the estate of Wilma Coomer, or Coomer, whatever it is. It's located at Turk Road and contains an existing non-conforming multifamily dwelling unit. As a result of this subdivision, the multifamily building will take access to Turk Road, and the balance of the site will take access through an easement to Old Pebble Road. The property is identified as Bucks County Tax Parcel 9-34-93. The plans before you tonight were prepared by Irick Eberhardt and Mientis. They were dated June 24, 2013, and were last revised December 6, 2013. Your planning commission recommended approval of this as a preliminary as final minor subdivision plan at its meeting on February 24th, subject to certain conditions. If you were inclined to follow the recommendation of the planning commission, I have a variety of conditions to review with the board, and I have shared those with Kelly McGowan, counselor for the estate. So when you're ready, and I can certainly do that. And if you want to give a brief description, Kelly, of, of the plan and where the buildings are, that might be helpful to the board that doesn't regularly attend the planning commission meetings. Sure, absolutely. Thanks, Jeff. Um, Kelly McGowan, represent um, the Wilma Cumber Trust, is the uh, property owner. What we have um, tonight is, as you can see from the plan, a really straightforward subdivision. We're taking an existing 2.4 acre lot that's presently non-conforming in the sense that it has two uses, a single family dwelling um, that, as Jeff mentioned, takes access um, through an easement to Old Pebble Hill Road, and then there's also a multifamily dwelling uh, located at the uh, frontage of Turk Road. We are basically drawing a line 
um, down through the middle of the property, creating a lot um, with the multifamily dwelling that's approximately an acre, just under an acre, and the lot that's going to have the single family dwelling on it is right around 1.4 acres. Um, we did go to the zoning hearing board, received variance relief, three variances, in order to um, have the non-conforming lot with respect to lot area for the multifamily dwelling. Um, we also received relief in order to facilitate um, the lot line in its location, considering an existing um, accessory structure that's already there, um, as well as the second lot, which doesn't have frontage on Old Pebble Hill Road. Um, as we said, it takes access through that existing easement. Um, no development is proposed, no changes to the site. Uh, we discussed with uh, uh, Boucher and James some additional buffering um, on that new lot line. Uh, we also discussed um, locating some, um, in response to DEP and uh, Bucks County comments, an alternative on-site sewage system locations in the event um, that you know they're required in the future. Um, but it is private water, private sewer. Um, we looked into um, public sewer connection. Uh, we were told no, so that's not going to happen. But um, otherwise, unless you have any questions uh, specifically, I think this is a fairly straightforward plan. Uh, any questions? No, I just mm -hmm. noted a comment that um, Ms. Uh, Judy Stern Goldstein made mm -hmm. with, with regard to um, impervious versus the woodland um, and and full and vegetation. Has right. that been resolved? That was resolved. What we did is um, uh, Micah from Judy's office went out to the site um, with Bob Irick, walked the site, confirmed that um, the existing trees do not, you know, count as the woodlands. So we confirmed our calculations and, and we were good there. Okay. Thanks. So that's the only question I had. Thank you. Mm -hmm. If the board was inclined to approve the plan, it would be compliance, petitions would be compliance with the Pickering Courts and Summerson report dated February 11, 2014. With the understanding, however, that the board will grant the waivers from the subdivision land development ordinance that are noted in Mario's correspondence. Next, continued compliance with the decision rendered by the Doylestown Township Zoning Hearing Board, which decision was rendered on October 22, 2013, and granted the three variances that Kelly just mentioned. One of the specific conditions is that the non conforming apartment use on lot number one will not be expanded. Next, compliance with the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection letter dated February 11, 2014. Next, compliance with the Boucher and James letter dated February 7, 2014. Except item 3C, since the parking is a non-conforming uh, parking facility. Next, compliance with the Bucks County Planning Commission correspondence dated February 3, 2014. Next, the grant of additional right-of-way to the township along Turk Road. Next, receipt of all permits approved by the agencies having jurisdiction, including DEP and the Conservation District. And lastly, applicant to pay any and all costs incurred by the township in connection with the application, including professional services. Do you agree with those conditions, Kelly? Yes, I do. All right. The, um, we'll entertain a motion to approve the preliminary final minor subdivision on 2931 Turk Road. I'll subject make that motion. Subject to the, thank you, subject to the conditions enumerated by Mr. Garton, and you will... Make that motion? I'll make motion. I'll second. Any questions from the board? No. Hearing none, all in favor of the motion? Uh, Aye. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good night. Now. Nice to see you. Mm -hmm. You too. Thank mm -hmm. you. I wasn't too far off, was I, with the time? I was. Three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> good. Go eat some dinner. Township bids. Um, the street sweeping is the first one. Um, provided for us, uh, you can. Everyone has read it. $38,435.76 or 19000 per sweep. Is there a motion to approve the, the street sweeping extension for 2014? Oh, actually, it's the same guy who's been doing it, but now we're just giving him an increase based on the CIN or CI, CPI index. CPI, and he was the one, he was the low bid last year. And we liked him. Mm -hmm. Excellent job. Okay. See Is there Take a motion care. to approve? Make a motion to approve. Thank you. Second? Second. All in favor of the motion. Aye. And sign and post bid. I have a little confusion with this one, but I think basically it is a we're, – we're awarding a – or approving the award to Chem Chum Supply in the amount of $1,802, Custom Products Corporation in the amount of $1,383.34, 
Garden State Highway products in the amount of $8,493.24 and U.S. Municipal Supply in the amount of $979.30. Is that correct? That needs to be corrected. It needs to be corrected. Okay. Thank you. The signature copy I corrected already, but basically the Garden State Supply was not a bidder this year. That kind of slept over from me pulling some information out of an old file. Okay. You're approving the uh, first two, as mentioned. You're also approving Garden State Highway products in the amount of $979.30. Okay. All right. So let me re reiterate. Kim Chung Supply Corporation in the amount of $1,802. Custom Products Corporation in the amount of $1,383.34. And Municipal U.S. Municipal Supply in the amount of $979.30. Garden, Garden, State. Garden, State. Garden, State. Garden State in the amount of $979. Got it. Thank right. you. Is there a motion to approve those three bids? I'll make a motion. Can I, can I ask a question first? Sure. <laughs> There's a motion. Is there a second? And then we can go to I'll question. second it. Go ahead. Okay. okay. Uh, Dick, could you just help me and help the resident understand what this is needed for? I mean, these are replacements from traffic accidents or new roads or new developments. I mean, every road now has a sign on it. So what would, where would new signs go? Well, we're constantly replacing signs. They either get damaged or the sun glare on them uh, ruins them. Okay. And sometimes they end up in other places, <laughs> like college <laughs> dorms, et cetera. <laughs> college dorms. So, no. uh, Basements. And we try to buy the minimum, but... Uh, it's a yearly thing. I'm okay. constantly doing this. Okay. That's fine. It's a motion and a second. Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. The next bit is um, for blacktop, the road material. There are a couple of road materials. This one's for blacktop and um, for to Eureka, Quarry, low bidder. Um, is there a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. I do have a question. Please. Um, is this an obli Do we have an obligation to buy this, is, or is this just a bid? And if, if you're going to do the paving, this is for your three-mile stretch of road that you're going to pave every year, right? That's correct. So if for some reason you weren't able to do three miles, you were only able to do two, are we obligated to buy this much, or what, what's our financial obligation to these guys? That has never been an issue. Okay. Our costs go up and down depending on our needs. If in the end of the season we haven't spent the money, they do not chase us. Okay. That's what I want to make sure. And the, okay. and the other reason is, sure. is because this is a consortium bid, we're bidding with all the other municipalities right. in Bucks County, so we're getting a good rate, and yes. it spreads it across all the no, municipalities. No, I, I understood so, I mean, that. I just but I think it, we it, that's why they don't worry about whether that's fine. we're more concerned about what we're paying when we yep. go to get that's, that's fine. the Thank you. Ton, tonnage rate. Yep. Did we have a motion and second? Yes. Yep. You good? I'm good. All in favor of the motion for the blacktop bid? Hi. Hi. Next is the stone and cold patch bid, which is really near and dear to our hearts right now. Um, is there a motion to approve? I'll make a motion. We Second. Need it. Thank you. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. And um, all these bids were, are within what's been allocated in our budget, so we're, we're well within the, those monies. And then the, the next thing from Mr. John is the engineering needs and costs for Central Park. Um, there's, there are obviously three or four more developments going on the trail, the Game Grove, the Century Trail, and the Athletic Fields um, Trail connections and um, parking facilities. So they need some engineering um, and some surveying and so on. So for Central Park and Turk Park, for the site information for the maps and land development, we're, they, there's an allocation for a request for $23,000 for that um, engineering. And then for wetlands and their boundaries and those uh, geographic necessities, there's an additional 10000 for Central Park and Turk Park to do those improvements. So in the end, I think this is all planning, uh, I mean um, engineering and um, mm -hmm. geographic um, work, yes. ge ge geologic mm -hmm. or geographic work, whatever it is. Um, so it comes to um, a total of $33,000. Is there a motion to approve these engineering needs and costs for Turk and Central Park? 
I'll make a motion. Thank you. Any questions about this? You yes. Just yes I know. So. I'm ready. <laughs> I am ready. We need um, a second. Um, Barbara, we need a second. Yeah. Is there a I'll, second? I'll second? Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, I'm similar to the to the previous question. All these are within the budget that you that we have today, mm -hmm. and this is since since this is only engineering work. Mm -hmm. Is the balance of the work in this year's budget, or is that planned for next year? That's will be planned for next year. Planned for next and year. And the following this, year. Yeah. You're not going to do uh, all no. this. Okay, so this is the only thing we're going to see spent this year for these projects. I think he's going. You're going to be doing some legwork on this. Yeah. I mean, I, I've got to get it started because it takes a long time to do the engineering, get the permits, and uh, this is preliminary stuff. I need to get it done before the leaves come out, come out on the trees because we're going to do a flyover. Mm -hmm. And that takes some uh, photographic uh, pictures of the topo. Uh, so I may come back to you at a later date and say I'd like to move ahead. We're doing pretty good with the engineering. Right. But I don't expect doing any work this year. Okay. Um, how, how many years are we left on that Turk Park lease for the county? Uh, Turk Park extension. Just kind of extension, extension that two years years ago. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was 25 yeah. years. 10 so. years ago. I think. Well, we have another no, at least about 10 or 15, 15 years. Yeah, okay. it's 25 years. So yeah, at I know least, it's 25 yeah. years. But I'd say 15. Okay. All right. Um, there's a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. All right, get going, Dick. Okay. Get it. Let's go. All right, the next fun thing on our agenda is that uh, is the uh, consideration of the purchase of the 10-plus acres owned by Dalval College using um, our open space money. The amount of the purchase is three hundred twelve dollars, way low. Three hundred twelve thousand dollars. Three hundred twelve thousand dollars. Three hundred twelve thousand dollars, way low beneath the, uh, way below the um, the various appraisals we've had for that property. One appraisal was for a, a build-out purchase, and it could have been a, a nice development or a, 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 a horrible development or just more development on that area of um, the Parkway and Lower State Road. That, so that's where the open space is that we're, we're looking to purchase. It's preserved 10, 10 acres. 10.5 acres. 10.5 acres. So um, the board has had this contract. Um, the agreement to purchase has some um, offsets. The, there's some consideration for releasing the Delaware Valley College on some fro front road improvements by the farmer's market. So that there's a give and take in this uh, this agreement because we're getting we're getting the property for such a, a nice piece of change for you know a really discounted rate um, we're giving them some break on some development um, frontage road improvement that may or may not even be necessary at this point in time. So the board has had the contract. Um, what the Del Val College has issued it has authorized yeah, they've it. Assigned they've it. signed they've it. They've approved it by they've their trustees. It. And uh, it next goes to the county if this board approves the purchase. Yeah, it's conditioned on the county agreeing to fund the purchase with open space money allocated to the township. I think the only township expenditure besides the due diligence is the $2,000. So for 10.5 acres and the need to use it before you lose it, it's a good piece of property, and I think the staff would recommend that the board approve it. And the open space park board also uh, open space um, farmland preservation right. board is also recommended, recommended that we buy this. I make a motion we uh, approve this agreement. I second. Excellent. Any questions? Mm -hmm. All in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Yes. Okay. Great. Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. The hazard mitigation plan update. We've been invited to once again participate with the county in the hazard mitigation plan update. We participated with the other county uh, municipalities in 2011. Uh, Lynn Bush has provided a memo as well as the agreement to participate, and it's my recommendation that we once again participate in this planning process. Uh, during 2011 and 12, when they were working on this, we participated, uh, Sinclair Salisbury, myself, and former Chief White at the time uh, as our um, emergency management coordinator. So Sinclair and I will once again um, like to participate with the county and have this hazard mitigation plan. So we need a, by the way, we have to participate in this in order to get yeah. able to receive and be eligible to receive federal um, disaster relief funds. So we want to be a part of this. We can do our own, but it would be a lot more expensive. 
Um, we were successful in 2011, and this is just doing the same plan, hazard mitigation plan, but we're going to update it to make it consistent with the uh, new regulations and so on. So we will need a vote to, uh, for, for the, from the board to participate in the planning of the two, 2014 hazard mitigation plan update. Is there such a motion? So moved. A second. Any questions? Nope. Okay. All in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Thank you. Chief, were you going to be part of that trinity from the township? Participate, participating I would love with so. a, I thought so. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, Eagle Scout proclamation for Zachary Miller. Is there a motion to approve? I'll make that motion. A second. second. I just want to um, uh, tell the board that um, Zachary's brother, Tim, did an improvement at the senior center when he received his Eagle Scout. That was his, that was his project. It was, I'm going to say bocce ball quote, but that's not right, is it? He did something driving it. So this is the, these are brothers, and they have both participated in township meetings. They've been in the audience. Cool. So um, with that, I'm going to call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 And I will go to this um, Eagle Scout Court of Honor and read the proclamation. Stephanie, so I, okay. I know I'm, a lot of the board members were invited. Yeah, yeah, everyone can go. I'm going to go for sure, so just so you know. Um, 2014 Sounds of Summer Concert Series contracts. Karen has assured me that these mm -hmm. contracts are within um, the same uh, price range as they have been for the last five or six years. She has a bang-up lineup of um, entertainment for those Wednesdays in the summer, early summer and uh, mid-summer. Um, so we... And these um, contracts are all funded by um, donations, grants, volunteer time, and dollars. So with that, I'd like to uh, ask the board to entertain a motion to approve the contracts in their, well, however many there are, two, four, six, eight, ten, whatever, however many they are, plus the Pyrotex fireworks on June 29th. Um, is there a motion to approve? I make a motion we approve the uh, contracts stated in... Karen Sweeney's on there. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Okay, so that's the um, the bands, the entertainment, and the fireworks. All in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Thank you. And then the Nishamni Greenway Trail Share Participation Agreement. This is why we got this award, and the Governor's Excellence is um, is executing this um, this uh, participation agreement. It's going to require um, approval of the board. With that, I'll ask for a, um, a motion. I make a motion. Will you approve it? And then the Shamini Greenway Trail Share Participation mm -hmm. Agreement. Is there a second? Second. Mm -hmm. second. Oh, cool. Thank you. Right. The only thing I would um, mm -hmm. ask that the, the one, two, three, the fourth whereas, I, I think if you don't mind, if you could add the the amount of the grant that we're participating in. Um, is it, it the, a grant under at the bottom yeah. in I number? Know, but it should be up here because you want it up there. Yeah, okay. there too. If you don't mind. Other than that, with that, I will tell the new shelf on borough manager who prepared this. That <laughs> <laughs> Just a recommendation. Get her on the stick, will you? Yeah. <laughs> it, it's it's absent. It needs to reflect the amount of that. Well, regardless. All right. There's a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Hopefully that will get corrected. Um, and then. The board has been asked to entertain the proclamation for recognizing on April 1st the National Service Recognition Day, um, honoring and respecting all those who volunteer in our community, whatever <coughs> shape. <coughs> Is there a motion to um, <coughs> to approve this proclamation? I'll make a motion to approve. It's not a funny thing. No, this is for real. It's not a joke. <laughs> Is there a second? Second. With that in line, you know, our next meeting is on April 1st, so that could be a big joke, too. <laughs> there a motion and a second. All in favor of the proclamation? Aye. 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 Thank you. And then last, there we've been given a consideration of the Retirement Plan Consulting Agreement. I know that one of the members of the board has some questions about that. Um, yes, he does. I, I, I mean, we all received this over the weekend, and the heart of it is, I don't know, 40, 50, 60 pages long. And... Even though I read it twice, they still had some questions, and I'm not comfortable approving this until obviously, I, unless you know someone here is uh, happy and knows understands it. But I would recommend that we table it and have this representative come out and you know walk me or at least whoever else wants to show walk me through it 
so that we can you know get it done properly in my mind. Motion to table. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. The matter will be tabled. Thank you. Treasurer's report for March 18, 2014. It was sent to you electronically. Is mm -hmm. there a motion to approve? Move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And the bills list for March 4th and bills list for March 18th sent to you electronically. Is there a motion to approve those two bills lists? Vote for approval. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, the next meeting of the supervisors is Tuesday, April 1st, 2014, 7 p.m. here. The D.C. Cherry Blossom trip is the 29th of March, and it's $55 a person. Go to our website, dostonrec.com, to sign up. Red Cross Blood Drive is, seven, um, is 2 p.m. to 7 p.m. on the 28th of March. Here, you can schedule through redcrossblood.org. Uh, Central Park Native Plant Demonstration this Saturday, beginning or starting at 8 a.m. We're going to meet at Central Park by the Ed Environmental Education Center. Um, we're going to talk about donating plants, talk about native species, and how we can in engender those in our community. So please visit us if you need more information. Call here and uh, ask for Ashley Thompson. And potholes, report them on your state roads, 1-800-FIX-ROAD, and for the township um, roads, you can call 348-9915. And if you need to know if it's a township road or state road, go on our website. They're all listed. Any other business? Hearing none, we're adjourned. Thank you very much, everybody. Thanks.